Yo Chi Chi Yo Yo Gong Chiga Well you may have guessed it today's vlog is about combining Qigong with yoga so I have been at a yoga festival this weekend kind of couldn't avoid it because it's um, at the retreat center where I stay uh, and you know they've had all the usual things uh, stalls with people selling things particularly hippie clothes and stones and a few other things as well food um, music entertainment and of course lots and lots of yoga and one of the things that has been uh, really interesting is that this year I can count at least four different workshop presenters who the focus of what they were doing was combining in some way Qigong with yoga and that is something new um, previously when I've attended and also presented at workshops a few years ago it was kind of kind of really a big deal something new that um, they were starting to have Qigong on the program that I was presenting along with sometimes some other Qigong instructors and now we're starting to see this this sort of emerging trend of people combining Qigong and yoga so is that a good thing well there are a lot of traditionalists who would tell you no no that's definitely not a good thing there are quite a few traditionalists who would say you should never never mix things from different traditions um, but looking at what's happening good thing or not at this stage I think it's unavoidable um, people are going to be combining these two different things and maybe we can talk about uh, how maybe that can be done in a good way you see um, if you've done some of my courses depending on which course you may have done some of the Qigong courses you'll know that in some of them I, I talk about the maps of energy that we have and because there are different aspects of the energy in our body and that flows through our bodies and um, different systems have different maps and even within the same system there are different maps that describe different parts of the energy and, and essentially the Indian system and the Chinese system they are working with the same energy you know uh, it's not like there's a, an Indian reality and a Chinese reality and you know Indian bodies and Chinese bodies I wouldn't be either of those um, there are human bodies we have energy in them when, and human minds of course this is part of it as well and it's ways of describing and focusing on different aspects of their energy so in theory we should be able to find some harmony between these different maps and find ways to authentically work with that energy and in fact many aspects of the maps are similar you know some of the terminology may be different for example in qigong they talk about qi and in yoga they talk about prana in qigong they talk about uh, Dantian whereas in uh, yoga they talk about chakras in Qigong they talk about meridians and in yoga they talk about nadis so uh, there's a lot of similarity a foundation to begin with anyway but um, one of one of the analogies I often use when I'm you know in the past when I've presented Qigong to audiences who are familiar with yoga is I've compared the different practices to, uh, to Indian food and Chinese food and if you think about it if you just get a pile of Indian food or you know a plate of Indian food a plate of Chinese food just put them together onto the same plate and kind of stir them together whew, it's probably not going to be so good but if you can dig down deeper into the principles and if you think about this just in food terms if you dig down into those principles and 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 look for the principles that they're cooked with not just taking them as is and throwing them together but look for the principles well that opens up some interesting possibilities doesn't it and you could possibly come up with something that's really delicious really good for you combining the principles and the flavors of those two different foods or two different cuisines so I do think it's possible but it do, will require understanding on you know and quite a deep understanding on the part of those who try to do this now interesting how you know what do I see so far in terms of how people 
uh, doing this or trying to do this because it's not just people here. I did attend, uh, I didn't go to all those four people who I counted and look there might have been more because I didn't go to all the workshops. Um, but those were just the ones who obviously were doing something combining them. And as well as that there's, you know, there's people online who I've seen doing uh, this sort of thing as well, combining the practices. And so what are the ways that they are combining them at the moment? Well, I can think of four basic ways that I, I see people um, combining these practices at the moment. So one is um, quite simply doing some Qigong practice before then carrying on with more of a yoga practice. So, um, you know, doing some regular Qigong moves from, from whatever tradition, whatever style, and then, and, and then carrying on into a yoga practice. And this gets the energy flowing um, before the practice. Yeah, I, I think there's some value in that. Um, another one is uh, trying to invoke the sense of flow of energy that we get from Qigong, again, into uh, yoga practice, doing regular yoga asanas, and then trying to bring that, that same sense of energy flow. And um, yeah, I think there's probably value in that too. Uh, because Qigong really does, you know, in terms of the comparison between yoga and Qigong, um, I've also just written a blog post, which if you're interested I'll put the link in the description below, which uh, is a comparison between yoga and Qigong. Some of the, you know, basic similarities and differences, both in origin and current practice, so you might want to check that out. Uh, but that really is one of the differences, is that in Qigong we really focus on the flow of energy much more, whereas yoga is more about the muscles and, and, and the posture and so on. Um, how else is it combined? Well, another way is actually just to do a standard yoga practice, um, but com combine that with talking about how different postures are stretching and opening meridians and so on. I've seen that as well. Um, and then the last one is, you know, various kind of hybrid movements just trying literally to combine different movements together from Qigong and yoga. So, you know, those are the main ways I've seen people trying to make these combinations. Um, there might be others as well, but that's what I've seen. And some have been more successful than others. Um, some have been a little bit messy. It, it, it does frustrate me sometimes when I see people, you know, sometimes they get minor details wrong and it's not a big deal. Um, but sometimes those minor details and even sometimes major details are really going to affect the benefits that someone gets from practice and also possible complications that they might face as well or just simply yeah just mean that they won't get a lot out of it and then other things I've seen I've seen people do do well but they're still in the formative stages it's like they're not complete yet they're experimenting with it they're trying it they haven't tried quite figured out how to bring it together yet and so you know, I think that's a good thing. I think, again, it's unavoidable at this stage, but as long as, um, as, long as they keep trying and, and, and do it from a basis of a true understanding, I think eventually they'll come up with something really good, really valuable. Um, and and I, guess, I guess that's probably the takeaway at this stage. I, you know, I applaud people for trying to, trying to do things that are going to enrich, enrich people's lives, um, and help them to understand themselves, their body, their mind better, and uh, be healthier and so on. But anyone who is trying to do this, I think to do it well they really need to have quite a deep understanding of both of these practices if they want to combine them harmoniously. At the moment it's much easier to find good chi uh, yoga training, much harder to find good qigong training. Um, because there's a lot of yoga out there so you know if, if someone's doing qigong and they want to combine it with yoga i encourage them to go get some really good yoga training to try to do that the flip side is probably more common if someone out there is already doing yoga and wants to combine some qigong i'd encourage them to get some some proper training so they really understand the principles before they start to experiment with trying to bring these things together Anyway, just a few of my thoughts and ramblings about this topic. Um, I am actually off to India in like two days, so who knows what uh, might come in terms of the vlog there. Um, I am going to be doing yoga there as well, so I might have some more thoughts. Anyway, um, if you've enjoyed this vlog, if you like hearing different things about 
Qigong in general, uh, how it applies to life, what's going on in the world of Qigong. I encourage you to like uh, the video, share it, comment, subscribe, all those good things. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.